Hi, everybody. I am Adrian Selvage with the Oklahoma Insurance Department, and I am so glad that you guys are joining us today for our 2021 Hoodwinked series. This is our last this year, so we are thankful that you are joining us. Um, OID, which is the Oklahoma Insurance Department, is a state agency. We do not sell insurance. We regulate and monitor all the insurance companies that are domiciled in this state of Oklahoma. Um, our job is to make sure that they are financially secure enough to pay out on claims if needed. Um, and so that's what we do. We also have a huge component of um, helping the consumer. So if you have questions about your home, your auto, your health insurance, you can call us. We have an entire team devoted to answering those types of questions. You can reach us at 1-800-522-0071. I'll put that in chat in a minute, but again, it's 1-800-522-0071. Our website is oid.ok.gov. And so um, that's how you can reach us. Real quick about the fraud prevention series. We started this a few years ago, predominantly because we were getting tons of scams targeting Oklahomans. And we reached out to several partnering agencies that were seeing the same thing. Our partners include the Oklahoma um, Attorney General's Office, the Oklahoma Department of Securities, Oklahoma Banking Association, AARP Oklahoma, and new this year, we added Oklahoma Social Security Administration, as well as the National Insurance Crime Bureau. So we are very grateful for our partners, and they are going to, you know, they've been bringing us this whole series, exactly what they're seeing on the ground right now. <coughs> um, before we begin, um, during this webinar, you'll be able to see and hear me and the presenters uh, but we can't see and hear you. We do have a chat feature. It's at the bottom right hand side of my screen. And so please, if you have questions, type them there. We hope that you will have some um, and you can communicate directly to me, the host, or um, you can get a question out and Ray will do it at the end. So that being said, I think I've said everything I need to say. I want to turn it over to Ray Walker, who is the division director of the Medicare Assistance Program here at OID, and he's going to explain what they do. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's me, Ray Walker, again. Uh, very quickly before we get started, I need to do the usual plug for the program. Uh, we are the Medicare Assistance Program. Uh, at the Oklahoma Insurance Department, and the program is funded by federal grants. We have three grants that provide us with funds to help people with their Medicare issues, whether that's their enrollment, what products they should choose, if they suspect possible Medicare fraud, if they're having trouble paying for their Medicare insurance or their, or their Part D prescription drug plan. We just want to be there to assist Medicare beneficiaries in the state of Oklahoma uh, with their questions. And there's a program like ours in every state. So if possibly you're joining us and maybe you're from another state, uh, we can even help point you in the right direction to find similar assistance in your home state. So once again, thank you for joining us this morning. I'm really excited. This is one of the new uh, participants in our Hoodwink series for this year. Um, I was not even aware that we had a National Insurance Crime Bureau, uh, and we started the series this year, and this gentleman actually reached out to us and made us aware of this, and I've learned quite a bit about this and this is I'm very excited to know that this bureau actually exists. So our speaker today is Frederick Lohman. Uh, he serves as the director of field operations for the Southwest region of the National Insurance Crime Bureau. The Southwest region encompasses the states of Arkansas, Louisiana, New Mexico, Oklahoma and Texas. He supervises a staff of special agents and support personnel assigned to investigate criminal conspiracies involving insurance fraud vehicle, cargo, and heavy equipment thefts. Mr. Lohman began a career in law enforcement as a military policeman in the United States Marine Corps. He served as a law enforcement officer for 20 years with state and municipal law enforcement agencies in Oklahoma and Texas, and has been commissioned for 42 years. Mr. Lohman joined the National Insurance Crime Bureau in 2006. He has over 20 years experience conducting complex invest investigations into suspected property casualty and commercial insurance fraud, burglar, burglary, motor vehicle, and heavy equipment thefts. Mr. Lohman is a graduate of the Oklahoma State University with a degree in criminal justice. He graduated with honors from the Oklahoma Highway Patrol 40th Academy and is a court-recognized expert in motor vehicle accident reconstruction. He is a certified insurance fraud investigator, 
fraud claim law specialist, associate in insurance services, associate in general insurance, as conferred by the International Association of Special Investigative Units, American Education Institute, and Insurance Institute of America. Mr. Lohman is a licensed multi-line claims adjuster in Texas. Welcome, Fred. Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to hearing what you have to share. Thank you very much for that, uh, that introduction. And I just want to thank the Oklahoma Department of Insurance for uh, uh, giving us this opportunity to speak to your audience today about uh, protecting themselves from uh, becoming victims of insurance fraud. So let me find my presentation here. There we go. Hopefully that everybody can see that. So uh, if everyone can hear me uh, today, what I'd like to do is just talk about some things to enlighten you uh, about contractor fraud that we see at the NICB and also uh, the Department of Insurance in Oklahoma uh, deals with and the Attorney General deals with in the aftermath of uh, you know catastrophe events like Texas, Oklahoma. Um, suffers uh, numerous weather catastrophes every year, whether it be flooding, hail, tornadic events, high winds, wildfires. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas are very similar uh, in the types of uh, catastrophes that we deal with in those states. Uh, probably the only thing that Oklahoma doesn't deal with that Texas does is, is the, uh, the hurricane events directly. So my entire uh, goal here is to put myself out of business uh, with, with those of you that are uh, attending today. I would like nothing better than to not have the referrals to work on to deal with nefarious contractors that take advantage of people. And the way to do that is to make sure that there's an educated consumer out there that is savvy to the types of fraud and abuse that takes place in the aftermath of a uh, catastrophe event. So that's the goal today, put myself out of business. And uh, the way we're gonna do that is give you some insight as to what you can expect in the aftermath of a catastrophe. Um, so again, this is uh, you know some of the, my accomplishments over the years. Uh, very proud of the fact that I was a Oklahoma City police officer and a state trooper in Oklahoma. It's a great state. Uh, I was chatting earlier with uh, uh, Adrian, and, and I certainly do miss Oklahoma. Maybe when I retire, I can go back home. So contractor fraud uh, relates to property uh, coverage on a property casualty insurance policy. So uh, this would be specifically to your homeowners, your dwelling policies, things of that nature. So. I want to just basically cover why uh, do we see so many seniors in our country uh, targeted by uh, fraudsters, as we call them at NICB. Well, you can see from the slide here, uh, it's all about the money, 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 money. Uh, seniors 50 and older uh, have a lot of assets and uh, Folks that are inclined to commit criminal uh, acts, they certainly know that. It's just like, why do you rob a bank? Because the bank's got money. It's, the, it's no different. And they have found that seniors uh, present a opportunity um, to defraud. So by the numbers, uh, it is a target rich environment. Uh, about 5 million they estimate, uh, you know, uh, Elders are victimized every year, and uh, it's there's not an exact science in determining how much those losses are. It varies between three and thirty-six and a half billion dollars a year, and of course the thirty-six point five billion that's very similar to the amount of property casualty losses that are sustained in the United States each year as well. 
Uh, one in 44 seniors report being a victim of crime. So we're going to talk about contractors, catastrophe events, and uh, specifically what drives those wind, hurricane, hail, and tornadoes. I'm sure you uh, recognize uh, some of the photographs here in the, on the slide other than the hurricane, but these are very prevalent uh, natural uh, weather events that occur in Oklahoma. So it's all about the insurance. And contractors, although the vast majority, and I want to preface this presentation by saying that the vast majority of contractors are upstanding uh, individuals, run good companies, uh, they deal fairly with their customers, uh, they, they do what they say and say what they do. But there's always a small group that looks for opportunities to take advantage of folks. Um, in the aftermath of a catastrophe. Uh, some of the ways that contractors will uh, commit insurance fraud or uh, defraud uh, policyholders is through mis uh, misappropriation of premiums, uh, fraudulent surrenders. This has to do with agents, impersonation of policyholders. Uh, they may take the money and run on uh, claims that they're. Uh, they promised or uh, have agreed to work on. There's, there's just a litany of ways that contractors can take advantage of an uninformed uh, consumer. And obviously, we at the NICB, we don't want to see uh, the American public being victimized twice. And that's sadly what happens in the aftermath of large scale catastrophe events. Uh, they prey on uh, disaster victims. Uh, they're very uh, emotionally upset. They're susceptible to scam artists because of the their mental state. Um, you're under a lot of stress. And the last thing that you need is somebody knocking on your door, promising to do all these wonderful things, and uh, they take advantage of you. Um, it might be un impossible to avoid um, these disasters, but you can take steps to protect yourself and to make yourself a harder target from those that uh, that uh, prey upon the victims of uh, catastrophes. We just had a, uh, a number of large hail losses in Texas uh, over the last two months. And one of the storms is estimated to have produced three million to three billion dollars in losses. And I can tell you personally, um, one of my rental properties uh, had to have a new roof. Uh, my NICB vehicle had six thousand dollars damage. My personal truck had four thousand dollars damage, and then my mother-in-law's home and one of her rental properties also had to have new roofs and skylights and gutters and so forth. And I'll tell you, I, I've been in this business now over 20 years. And even for me, that knows the ins and outs and the processes, it's it's a stressful time to get all those claims filed, uh, provide the insurers with the information they need so they can make informed decisions about the claims, uh, to deal with the contractors. Uh, it, it is a very stressful process, even for somebody like me that's in the business. So, um, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not uh, impervious to being uh, stressed out by this uh, as well as anybody else. So, I feel for the victims of uh, disasters, and that's why we do these uh, presentations, is to make sure that you're well armed and uh, hardened against being victimized a second time. So one of the things that you may see in the aftermath of, uh, of a catastrophe, like a large hailstorm or tornado event that's damaged a bunch of roofs, you'll you'll get uh, contractors that will come into the area, uh, many from out of state, and they'll go door to door and they'll knock on the doors and they'll they'll promise to uh, clean up, do repairs, things of that nature, and and that's the first 
uh, red flag that you need to be aware of. Uh, glance out, look at their vehicles. Are they local? Do they have local numbers? Or they have uh, out of state uh, license plates? Uh, you need to be aware of that. Uh, you need to be very cautious about letting these folks into your home. You don't know anything about them. Um, and you want to give yourself some time to make a good decision. So it's okay to slow down and just basically uh, tell them that you're not in a position to make any decisions about repairs at that point. Give yourself the time to make the good decisions that you've made over your entire life. Um, also, uh, you may get uh, contractors that uh, will come in and they'll offer to manipulate the prices of the repairs to cover your deductible. Um, and I would remind you that the deductible payment requirements are part of your insurance policy. It's stipulated in the policy what your deductible amount is and uh, whether it's a percentage or a flat fee, but you're responsible for paying that. That's your, that's your contribution uh, to the payment of the contractor for the repairs to your home. And it varies based on the type of policy that you have as to what uh, what that amount will be. But I would be very cautious uh, of any contractor that uh, offers to pay your deductible uh, or to cover it, and uh, that's a problem. We recently passed legislation in Texas last session, so that's two years ago, that uh, you know basically made that illegal. Uh, we cleaned up some language in a previous law that was somewhat ambiguous, and we made it very clear that uh, that doing so is a violation of law. Although it, it didn't get the uh, the punishment range that we had hoped for, it is a class A misdemeanor. But we are able to what we call aggregate uh, cases where a, for example, a roofer would uh, do this 15, 20 times. We can take the amounts and we can combine those and we can create a felony offense um, for the numerous offenses that were committed for uh, waiving of the deductible. But that's something that you should immediately uh, uh, stop the conversation because that's not where you want to go. So there's individuals. That, uh, that will prey upon consumers in the aftermath of catastrophes. And sometimes there's organized groups that will descend on uh, catastrophe locations. And again, they realize that the victims of catastrophe events are very vulnerable. They're emotionally uh, susceptible to being swayed. Uh, they'll promise low cost, quick repairs. They use inferior materials. They never finished a job. Uh, or they don't do any work at all. We had a case in Paris, Texas, some uh, some years back. Uh, they we had some contractors that came in from California. They targeted a community outside of Paris, which is just south of the Red River, and uh, in Oklahoma. And what they did is they specifically targeted uh, the uh, the elderly in this community. And the same thing, they got money up front from uh, from the, the consumers, <coughs> excuse me, that were victimized in the uh, hailstorms, and they took that money. They never pulled the roof off. They never made a repair. Uh, they several hundreds of thousand dollars, uh, two or three hundred thousand dollars, was uh, was built from these victims, and then they left the state and went to California and did the same thing out there. Uh, fortunately, we were able to work with the California Department of Insurance and uh, those individuals were arrested and prosecuted. But the sad thing about it, money was gone and the, the individuals that, you know, on fixed incomes who least could afford that type of loss in their life were now faced with unrepaired roofs and having to pay for that themselves because the insurance companies, once they pay the, uh, the amount and you turn that over to the uh, contractor before anything's done without a contract, you've got no leg to stand on. And if you also pay cash uh, before the insurance company pays, 
you, you have no way of recovering that money as well. You have no record that the money was paid. And uh, we often see those contractors take the money and run. So we see the storm chases. Again, you'll see people from all over the country that will come in uh, in the aftermath of a catastrophe event. We, we've seen this with Hurricane Harvey. We saw it in the aftermath of Katrina and the hurricanes last year. There were, there were contractors from all over the U.S. that came in. And uh, they'll do door to door solicitation. Um, you may not, you don't call them, but they just show up. Uh, they, uh, they'll look for and target homeowners with physical limitations. Uh, and the reason they'll do that is they may want to get up on that roof and create physical damage. So if they go up there and they don't see any damage from hail, well, they'll create the damage with a ball peen hammer or a dime. They'll actually damage the roof. So that uh, there's there's justification for the insurance company in their mind to pay the claim. Uh, they'll claim to be certified or affiliated with a state or federal emergency program, or a uh, or some type of government entity. Um, that's not going to happen, folks. So if you see that and they tell you that, you need to just politely show them to the door, and that uh, you want to consult with your insurance company and your family members and. You're not making any decisions about repairs at that point. Be, uh, be confident uh, in your ability to do that. That's your home. If they uh, uh, deploy high pressure sales tactics, that's another red flag uh, that you need to stop the conversation, end it, politely show them the door. Um, uh, we had cases where, you know, in one neighborhood, that same solicitor will go from home to home to home and they'll get the names of those homeowners and they'll uh, they'll show up at your home and say, hey, uh, your neighbors, Sally and Jane uh, or and Jim, hey, they're getting their roof done and uh, they told me that you need a roof done. And so that kind of lowers your guard because, well, your friends and your neighbors are using them, so maybe they're okay. Uh, again, then they'll offer these cash incentives to get the jobs run from those types of offers. They're nothing but problems. Again, they'll pressure you for an immediate decision. Push back. You don't have to make a decision uh, right away. Give yourself the time to make good decisions and, and just stop the conversation. Uh, if they uh, make claims of providing lengthy guarantees on their work, outside the normal. If they're saying, yeah, I give you a, a lifetime uh, warranty on the work we do for you, you'd be very su suspicious of those types of claims. If they uh, indicate that they'll handle the entire insurance claim for you, uh, in many states, that's not possible. A contractor cannot act uh, in the interest of a policyholder on a claim with their insurance company. Again, be very, very skeptical of any contractor that offers to do that. And in case you didn't know, the you know, roofs are the most expensive component of your home. Everything that you hold near and dear is under that roof. Okay. And uh, again, I go back and say, well, most contractors are reputable, they're honest, they do a good job. There are those that in the industry, uh, as we call them, two chucks uh, in a truck that'll show up uh, with a magnetic sign and a ladder, and uh, they'll promise you the moon. Be very, very skeptical of, uh, of these contractors. Again, this just reiterates the false promises and assisting on the payments up front. Again, stop the conversation, politely show them the door, consult with your insurance company, and your family, friends, and loved ones, and make good decisions. You may also find that they lie about or uh, exaggerate the amount of damage to your home, and they're looking for larger payouts. Uh, again, they may also uh, uh, intentionally cause damage to your home. Uh, and if you're not able to get out there and watch them, I would not allow anybody onto your roof uh, unless you're able to 
put your eyeballs on them and watch what they're doing through that entire inspection process. You just allow them to go up there, then you really don't know what they've done. And if they do mechanical damage, and many, many insurance companies have the, the forensic abilities now to, to examine roofs and determine whether that damage was from a random pattern of hail or whether it was uh, intentionally caused uh, mechanically, they can do that. And that drastically changes the type of claim because now if there wasn't damage on there uh, caused by uh, hail strikes, uh, it's not a it's not a, uh, a covered loss under a hail loss. It may be vandalism or the intentional damage by the contractor. One other thing that they'll do is they'll uh, they'll uh, suddenly increase the amount of uh, costs to do the job. So they'll quote you low, and then they'll come back in and say, "All right, well." Your entire deck is rotting. All that uh, plywood decking's got to come off. We couldn't tell that it was a problem until we got the shingles and the uh, the uh, the uh, tar paper off. But now it's all got to be uh, replaced. You want to make sure that you get if you enter into a contract with a contractor to do the work that you do so and you get an itemized contract uh, that has the entire scope of repairs. So that there's no questions, you know what they're expected to do, and the contractor knows what they're expected to do. No surprises, as I say. I'll tell you that your local and state government uh, agencies have a big role and a big part in helping consumers uh, stem the tide of catastrophe, fraud, and abuse, and. Uh, we saw this play out very effectively uh, several years ago when we had what we referred to as the December tornadoes in uh, in east eastern Dallas, uh, devastating storms, and um, we were able to get with the local communities, the local municipalities, educate them on what they would uh, would be seeing in terms of uh, all these uh, contractors coming into the communities. Many of them took emergency measures uh, to require soliciting permits from these individuals. Uh, they required them to pull building permits to do the uh, repairs on the uh, on the homes within their communities, and that had a tremendous impact on reducing the amount of fraud and abuse that that occurred. And uh, the municipalities and state agencies do a great job of doing that. In Oklahoma, contractors are, uh, have to be licensed. Uh, in Texas, they're not. And that varies from state to state. But um, local communities are able to enact ordinance uh, that requires the uh, contractor to have a building permit and a solicitor's permit. And that certainly keeps things honest to some degree. Uh, and the really bad ones certainly don't want law enforcement or governments checking on their background. So they tend to uh, avoid those types of uh, requirements. Also, uh, you need to look on your, uh, on the uh, Attorney General's Consumer Protection website. Um, there are lots of uh, re requirements throughout the country on rights to cancel. Uh, they allow uh, a consumer to cancel a roofing contract with after 72 hours after receiving notice uh, that the insurance claim was denied. So you have some consumer protections that you need to be aware of. And the best place to do that is at the consumer protection sites of the attorney general's office. We talked about rebate prohibitions or deductible uh, rebates. Um, again, any contractor that offers to do that what they're doing is they're going to inflate the claim or they're going to they're going to uh, cut corners on the claim so for example they may not replace the uh, the under sheathing uh, the uh, tar paper uh, on a uh, on a roof repair or a roof uh, replacement they may just pull the old uh, shingles off and then go right over the old underlayment with new shingles they may not replace the drip edge they may not replace the uh, vents, the vent pipes or the turbines 
Um, they may just paint those, make them look good, but they're still beat up, they're still dented, and they still may not function uh, right uh, because they don't replace those according to uh, the, uh, the contract. <clears throat> Again, as I stated earlier, consumer education, uh, that's an that's a, uh, incredibly valuable tool that NICB employs the departments of insurance throughout the United States utilize to educate their citizens and consumers to avoid contractor fraud. Talked about this building permit requirements, answers, anti solicitation ordinances, post repair inspections. This is also a very good tool that we had some communities uh, uh, that we've dealt with in the past utilize this, and uh, that makes certain that the job gets done according to code. Local ordinances compelling liability workers' compensation on insurance coverage of contractors. Uh, they do background checks by the local authorities. Think about that. Do you really want somebody that's a sex offender or a wanted person or has a questionable license, license status uh, into your home? Uh, no, of course not. And so, uh, you know, it's very important that uh, the local and state governments do their job to, to protect consumers as well. And an another uh, good uh, ordinance is the compelling of liability and workers' compensation and auto insurance coverage. If that contractor doesn't have general liability and workers' compensation, you really want that person and their work crew on your home. What happens if one of them falls off and gets hurt or killed? You could have a problem. You could have some liability. So that's why it's vitally important that these contractors have the appropriate levels and types of insurance before anyone ever goes up on that roof and does a repair. So the mechanical damage I talked about, common, two common ways, dime spinning and the ball beam hammer. Uh, this is just uh, an inf informational uh, uh, bulletin here. It shows obviously Texas is number one. Uh, these are the top five states. Oklahoma is, I think, in the top 10. We were lucky. We've had some decrease from 27 to 2019, but the last couple of years, the, the numbers have gone back up. This is an example of um, dime spinning. You watch his right hand. He just mars and marks each shingle that he wants to create the illusion that a hail strike caused that damage. And this person goes on and on and on and uh, continues to do this all over the roof. The NICB sets up uh, you see operations where we'll take homes. My father-in-law and mother-in-law are very good. A couple of years ago, let us utilize two of their rental properties. And then we set up the surveillance cameras and uh, we, uh, we had the, the top 10 offending uh, contractors that we suspected of this type of uh, conduct. We brought them up and uh, were able to secure evidence of this type of activity. Just to let you know, this really does happen. Uh, this is from June of 2020, and we have a contractor that was uh, charged uh, with seven felony counts for roofing uh, fraud. And you see, he took over $40,000 from the, uh, the victims, and this was in Washington and Oklahoma County. So it does happen, folks. Um, you, you feel safe and secure, but uh, if you let them in the door and it's not the right person, you potentially are, uh, are susceptible to being scammed. Now, what do you do? Okay, do your homework, be vigilant, prepare. Um, check roofing contractor associations, the Better Business Bureau, Federal Trade Commission, credit bureaus, law enforcement, uh, good contractor lists. 
internet searches on contractors. Just type their name in and type in complaints or reviews. That'll give you some idea of who you're dealing with. Do your homework, be prepared. Pretty well uh, talked about this before. Again, these are our NICB recommendations. Again, I want to reiterate, we saw a lot of this in the aftermath of hurricanes. They show up saying that they're federal emergency management officials um, uh, and endorse, endorse contractors or, or loan companies. Don't fall for it. Just politely show them the door and uh, and end the conversation. That's not going to happen with a government official. And just to remind remind you, you know, your home. It's 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 your it's your most important thing, uh, other than your family. Uh, that's where you raise your family. It's where you live. You laugh. You learn. Uh, it's a place that you feel safe. And you don't want to let just anyone on that roof, which is the the major protective uh, part of that home. Uh, up there to, to cause you any problems or harm. Okay, do your homework and don't be afraid to uh, close the door politely and uh, take time to make good decisions. Again, some more, and I show you these because all of these um, uh, informational bulletins are available at www.nicb.org. You can go on to our website and you can pull these down. And I suggest right with your insurance policy, you put a, a few copies of these things um, you know, in there with your insurance, your homeowner's policy. That way, when God forbid something bad happens, you, you've got some things, some research, some material that can help you make those good decisions. Again, you, you got a great unit in the uh, Oklahoma Department of Insurance and a fraud unit, uh, NICB, myself, Work with Rick Rack Wagner at the uh, anti fraud unit for many, many years. And, uh, you know, we work together in floods and wildfires and, you know, the uh, tornadic events, you know, so hail claims, things of that nature. And you got a good unit out there. Same thing with the attorney general. They're looking out for your best interest. So, what can NICB do? Well, we've been around since 1912, over 100 almost 110, 12 years now. And uh, we have a force of special agents and analysts throughout the uh, United States, including Oklahoma. And we're there to uh, to keep an eye on the bad actors uh, and to hold those individuals that would prey upon the insurance industry and their policy holders, you the consumer, uh, and, and keep them from uh, being victimized. Uh, this is response. This photograph is actually from the uh, Christmas tornadoes that hit uh, East Dallas. And you can see this is one of my agents, uh, Tony uh, Folkers, a retired sergeant, detective sergeant with the Arlington, Texas Police Department. And he's with Lieutenant Taylor from the Texas Department of Insurance Fraud Unit. And it just so happens this crew, they were up there doing this work. They didn't have a building permit. Uh, they didn't have a solicitor's permit, and so uh, uh, they uh, they con the uh, two agents contacted the uh, local authorities, and uh, they took enforcement action. And the word quickly got out to these contractors that if you don't play by the rules and do things according to the law, you're gonna you're gonna have problems. Again, this is what you can pull down from the NICB site. Please do so, visit our site, a lot of great information there. Another one on disaster fraud. There's one specific for hail. I'm sure uh, a lot of you have seen hail that size. That's really what damaged my vehicle and my uh, NICB car was about that size. And then of course, we, we get all of our assignments either from law enforcement, from consumers that report it, or from the insurance industry's questionable claims uh, submission. So we have a litany of ways that we receive tips and complaints uh, to conduct our investigations on. And then we off also offer a lot of uh, in-person and uh, training of this type, again, for the insurance industry, for our law enforcement partners, and for consumers, because 
we really feel like educating uh, consumers, law enforcement, uh, and the insurance industry is the best way to reduce losses. So with that, I think I finished up about five minutes ahead of schedule. I'll uh, open this up for any questions anyone may have. And again, I want to thank uh, the Oklahoma Insurance Department for uh, allowing me to speak with you today and anything we can do to help uh, our neighbors to the north, we're here to do. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I've got several questions uh, that I want to run by you. And uh, hopefully you're the man to ask. If not, I'm hoping you can point us in the right direction. You mentioned earlier about those contractors who offer to cover the deductible. If you are approached by someone who makes that offer, what is the appropriate thing to do? Just say no, thank you, or are we supposed to report that? And if so, to whom? Yes, so yes, you're right. Two things. Uh, I would end the conversation again politely. Because unless this conversation is occurring outside, uh, if it's occurring in your home, you, you've got to be mindful of that, okay? And so just politely end the conversation. It's okay to just tell them, I, I'm not prepared to make a decision on this. I need to consult with my insurer. I need to consult with my children, my friends, whatever. Uh, but just give an excuse, politely end the conversation. And then... After they're gone, I would write down specifically what they said, and I would report that. And you can report that to the Oklahoma Insurance Department and our fraud unit. Uh, you can also go online to www.nicb.org. You can report it to NICB, uh, or you can report it to your insurance company, right? Uh, that's probably the easiest way to do that would be to contact your uh, your insurance adjuster that you're working with and say, hey, I just had this contractor out here and he's basically offering to cover my deductible. Uh, and I know that that's part of my responsibility to pay that and that it's illegal not to, uh, you know, to basically lie to the insurance company. So I want to report that. I don't want any issues, problems. I want to make you aware of that. Okay. So you, one of the other things that you mentioned is that you really shouldn't let the contractor work direct, directly with your insurance uh, and then in fact in some states it's illegal do you by chance know if oklahoma is one of those states you know i i meant to check that i don't know specifically but I, for example your neighbor to the south it is it's it's illegal for that contractor to negotiate and 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 represent a policyholder in the uh in the claim process, uh, the policyholder could could retain the services of a public adjuster, which could do that. But the the contractor is prohibited from acting in that capacity in many many states. That's a prohibited conduct. Okay, which great that you mentioned an adjuster. Uh, I I live in Moore, Oklahoma where we've had more than our share of tornadoes and yes, seen lots and lots of roof damage. One of the things that seems to be a common thread is this uh, uh, disagreement between what the roofer says it's gonna cost to replace the roof versus the adjuster who represents the insurance company. What, what does a person do under those circumstances when they feel like when, when we've got a contractor that's telling us there's no way that can be replaced for that amount of money and a, an adjuster that's uh, saying something different. What's the tiebreaker? What, what should a person do? Well, many, many policies allow for an umpire or an arbiter, arbiter to, to look at both sides, look at the damage estimate of the roofing contractor, look, look at the estimate of the of the adjuster for the insurance company, and uh, and see where the where the issues are, where where the where the where the you know where are we coming up short, and if it can't be resolved through discussions, uh, then uh, policies allow for this umpire for this arbiter to come in and to make those decisions. Um, yeah, again, I, I just I mentioned I went through I've gone through this now with three properties, one of my rentals and my mother-in-law's rental and in her home. And 
you know, the initial uh, estimate that the insurance companies uh, prepared, um, and of course they didn't know, uh, but uh, one of them missed three skylights that were broken. And until we, we got up there and we removed fabric that was uh, solar fabric that was covering it, we, we didn't see the cracks caused by the hail strikes. Well, you know, that's, you know, $3,000 worth of damage. We went back to the insurance company and said, okay, this needs to be supplemented. This is, we think this is covered uh, under the laws. Um, the same thing I, on our rental property, uh, when they got the tear, do the tear off, they found that there was a second underlayment of uh, roofing material, of uh, uh, underlayment that was on that roof. Well, it's not just removing one layer plus the shingles. Now they had to remove two. There's an additional cost that a policyholder can go back to their insurance and say, hey, we didn't know this until they got the doing the, doing the tear off, but we believe this should be supplemented and paid for. And I we didn't have any, I didn't have any issues with either of the insurance companies. They were very uh, good about saying you're right and they're gonna cover that. So, you know, I, I would take the, the approach of trying to work to negotiate with your insurance company first. And uh, you certainly don't want to get into a, you know, a, a shouting match or anything like that. There's nothing good's going to come out of that. Okay. Um, someone asked the question, you know, as you know, materials, the price of materials have gone up substantially and we've seen all of that kind of advertising and stuff. Is the expectation, are the insurance companies going to pay based on those uh, adjustments in the cost of those materials, or is it just based on whatever the dollar amount of your coverage is? No, I, I, they are, fa I know they're factoring that in. Again, this is from personal experience, but we replaced a, a roof about three years ago on a home, and uh, the cost of that, of a very similar roofing uh, shingle, uh, then as, as a, you know, compared to now, it is definitely increased in cost. And, and part of that is, uh, you know, shingles are asphalt. They're a, they're a petroleum product. Uh, if you put uh, tar paper, that's a petroleum product. And of course, as, as the oil prices go up, those ancillary products that are produced from, uh, from those uh, petroleum products, it goes up as well. You have catastrophic losses. It's the same thing with lumber. Uh, you know, the decking price, uh, we had to replace deck on the previous home and we had to replace decking on this uh, recent storm and it's gone up in price. And the insurers that, that I have, that I dealt with, they, they uh, made allowances for those increases in prices. Um. You were talking earlier about the high pressure sales tactics that people use and, and that sort of thing. One of the things that we've also run into was the fact that we had people who had significant roof damage and uh, were, were trying to get the quotes that they needed to get the damage repaired. But um, part of the issue was that there was, uh, there's a disconnect that a lot of times people don't understand that you've got the damage that was caused by the initial, you know, the hail or whatever, but that subsequent damage, maybe water damage that's caused by a leak that was created by the storm, isn't necessarily covered uh, in that claim. Is that correct? Well, if, for example, if, if you had um, a, a, a significant and uh, hail storm that created holes in your roof, and rainwater entered into your home as a result of the of the hail damage uh, that was caused to your roof. No, it, it, matter of fact, uh, again, personally, uh, on on these recent storms we had, every one of those adjusters that came out to those three properties, they they asked, Mr. Loman, did you did you have any damage to the interior of your home, any water damage uh, to your ceilings or your uh, to your uh, insulation, anything like that. And I said, as far as I know, we, we don't have any damage and I don't think the hail, you know, breached the 
the shingles and the uh, and the roof deck structure. So, but that it does happen, uh, and as long as as the as the event that's covered created that, I guess uh, the best way to describe it created the the, the opportunity for that wind driven rain to you know, egress into the home. That's something that may be covered under your policy, which is very important that you read your policy, understand your policy. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you don't understand the policy, because a lot of people don't, you know, they don't bother once uh, they get their policies in force, they put it in the drawer, they file it, uh, get it out. And if you don't understand it, sit down with your, your insurance agent and go over it. Know what it will and will not cover. Uh, you you got to be educated. You got to be informed uh, so that you do understand. You cannot wait until the catastrophe to try and figure all of this out. You're going to be overwhelmed. You got to have a plan. Same thing with with uh, you know vetting uh, contractors ahead of time. Know who a good roofing contractor is. General contractor, electrician, plumber you know, tree uh, removal and trimming service, have all those things teed up that you, uh, that you can go to when, you know, the, you know, the, the, the sad uh, catastrophe event happens to you. Um, be prepared, have a plan. Okay. Now you also mentioned about when you talked about once they get up there and they start removing the materials, and then, oops, all of a sudden now they're saying there's additional damage and to to make sure that all of this is in the contract. I just wanted to clarify, are you saying that prior to them starting the work on the roof, that there should be a document that outlines the what ifs? Or were you saying just like, can you walk me through the kind of the timing of that? Well, what typically what's going to happen is you're going to file a claim as we did for for suspected hail damage to the, to the shingle. And the insurance company is going to send out a field adjuster that will get up physically up on the roof, will inspect the entire field of the shingles uh, to determine if in fact there's damage. If there is, they're going to do a they're going to do an estimate as to the scope of damage, which the insurance adjuster will then send to you the policy owner. You then can go to your trusted contractor and have them come out you can you know, obviously share with them what the insurance adjuster found. They'll go up, take a look at it. Uh, in, in our case, the contractor felt uh, what he described as some softness in one particular part of the roof that he suspected there may be some roof um, uh, you know, deck rot. Okay, we didn't know that uh, until they actually tore it off. but. Uh, when once they did the tear off, sure enough, that one piece of decking was in fact bad and had to be replaced. So in that case, we supplemented for that for the for the cost of the decking to remove it, put new decking down, and was not a problem. That needs to be added to the contract that that was part of the repairs because once the work is all done, you want to take that uh, that contract of repairs, that scope of repairs. That your contractor did, you want to send a copy of that to your to your uh, insurance company, so that they have that in file. Uh, they know that you did the work that they that they made their payments on, uh, and that you either uh, did the work that was scoped, or you obviously you can go above and beyond if you if you want to put a better uh, roofing system on. You're certainly entitled to do that, but make sure your insurance company is aware of what you did and what the total scope of repairs were. Okay, last question. You you talked about a minute ago uh, about if there is a, discon a disagreement about what the repairs are gonna cost and stuff, and you mentioned a public adjuster. If someone's looking for a public adjuster, do we just Google it online to find one? Or is there a certain, uh, where do you go to find a reputable public adjuster? Again, you. Obviously, you can go to uh, public adjusting sites. Uh, they have associations uh, in Oklahoma and you know all over the country. You can go to those sites. You can go to um, uh, uh, the uh, 
the insurance departments or uh, uh, and, and look and see who's licensed as a public adjuster in, in those states, just like Texas. You have to be a licensed uh, public adjuster in Texas. Uh, you can go to those sites. Again, go to Google, go to Bing and type in, you know, public adjuster Fred Lohman. Um, reviews, uh, complaints, uh, if you get, get the names of some, do your homework, make sure that, you know, these are, these are competent, uh, honest, uh, forthright, uh, individuals that, that are going to represent you because they, that's what's happening. You're, if you retain the services of a public adjuster, then you're going to allow that person to represent you, uh, in dealing with the insurance company and the contractor. Uh, to, you know, to get your repairs done. Fred, thank you so much. This has been really, really helpful. I appreciate you coming and joining us today and uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our hoodwink series this year. This is our last one. Uh, if you do have some information you'd like to share with us, your opinion on the hoodwink series, whether you'd like to see them continue to being web based or uh, uh, maybe going back to live next year. We, we're, we're playing with different ideas. We wanna be able to continue reaching consumers wherever they're at and giving them the information they need. So if you've got any feedback for us regarding the series itself or topics you'd like to hear covered, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, at, you can leave us a message on our website, oid.ok.gov. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in the future.